glory to God. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All to another moment in time where we can dive into his word. I'm going to talk about the gift. We're going to continue the series of understanding the gift. Amen. We're going to just kind of dive right into it. We're not going to uh, hold up and thank God um, for this series. Well, I do, rather, anyway. <laughs> thank God for this series. It's very um, informative and helping and guiding and getting us in a better place of understanding that everything that God has given us has been a gift, and we thank God for it. We honor him for it. And I'm um, just going to go in a little further, understanding <coughs> the gift of God. Amen. Amen. The gift of God. We started off talking about giving, understanding giving. We started off after that, we started about receiving, because you got to understand a gift is gift given. Not only is it given, but it is also received. Amen. Then we talk about the gift of uh, of his son and how he gave his son the ultimate gift. Amen. We talked about the gift of of faith. Amen. I tell you, we 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 ran across a, a, a a number of topics, amen, but today we're going to talk about, and it came up in our sermon last time, and I hadn't preached this uh, in a while, but in understanding the gift, I don't think, I think this is a, a very good one, a very uh, 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 a neat one to understand about obeying, that obeying and obedience was a gift given to us uh, by Jesus Christ. I think a lot of times we still teach and understanding, and obeying, and, and something that you have to do. You know, you have to obey God. You have to, and in a sense, that is correct. But I don't think we really understand obedience uh, under the eyes of grace. Understanding obedience uh, uh, through the lens of our Father. So we're going to just talk on the the uh, uh, gift of obedience and obeying that has been given to us by way of Jesus Christ. And it's and it's awesome and amazing to understand. And it, and it should, as you understand these different topics that we go over and the different things that have been given to us as a gift, I, I, I pray and I believe by way of faith that it begins to take the pressure off of you, uh, that you don't feel so much pressure and things that you feel like you have to do and things that you feel like you have to achieve. And I hope it gives you uh, insight and clarity and, and a peace to understand that, look, it is already done and I just need to allow myself to rest in his finished works. And I, and I pray and I believe that it's going to relieve pressure, it's going to uh, relieve uh, attention, it's going to uh, open up the door for more peace to roll through, uh, enter into your life uh, uh, in a more uh, calm calmness that will uh, continue to follow you and rest with you as you go through life, as we continue to unfold the different gifts that he has given to us. And today we'll be talking about obedience, amen. So we got to understand, starting off, gift is a thing given willingly, it's a gift. All right, it's given willingly, all right, uh, to someone without payment or uh, without any strings attached, all right? It's a present, amen, uh, something voluntarily transferred by one person to another without compensation, all right? They're giving you a gift, and they're not looking for you to give it back. They're not looking for you to give them a gift, <coughs> all right? And watch this, the act, right, or power of giving. It's the act, the right, or the power of giving a gift. A gift. Amen. And today's gift that we'll be talking about today is obedience. Obedience. And I know a lot of times when we think about obedience, even if we're not growing up and being raised as children, even if sometimes if we're raising our child, we raise them under the guise of they have to obey. They have to obey. If I say something, you have to do it. Right. And we've been we've been taught that way. We've been raised that way that you have to obey. You have to do what I say. Now, you better do what I say. If I tell you something, you better do what I say. Amen. But now that we are, are under grace and now that we have a, a, a heavenly father, we need to understand obedience in a greater light. Right. So look, when I when I looked up the word obey, I, I simply came up with these definitions. Obey is simply to comply with the command or direction or request. Watch this now to comply with it. Of a person or a law, 
all right? We have to obey. You have to obey people, but we also have laws that we have to obey, right? So then I, you have to understand this, too, when it comes to laws. We have natural laws that we have to obey, but now watch this, folks. Watch this, saints. We also have spiritual laws <laughs> that we have to obey. And sometimes we may not be seeing certain things happening in our life because we're not obeying or abiding uh, uh, to the way that the law is operating in the spirit. So just like we have natural laws we have to obey, we also have spiritual laws that we have to obey as well. That's a whole nother sermon. All right, watch this now. Watch this. Submit to the authority. Submit your way, your will to the authority of that person. Obey. Obey. Watch this now. So, so real quick, we're gonna we're gonna hit a few scriptures today. Y'all just y'all follow me. I promise you by the time we get to the end, it's gonna be made plain. But let's start off in 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. We're gonna hit quite a few scriptures today. Amen. We're gonna throw, we're gonna throw seed. We're gonna throw a lot of seed today. Amen. But I know it's gonna land on good ground. Amen. So watch this. 2 Corinthians. We're talking about obedience, obey. And we need to see it in the right light, under the light of grace. Uh, but we also need to see it, see how it was done under the under the old covenant. But let's let's look at this real quick. Second Corinthians, third chapter. We're gonna to go to the fifth verse. Second Corinthians, third chapter. We're gonna start in the fifth verse. Let's read this real quick. All right. It starts off by saying, Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god let me read it and amplify not that we are fit or qualified and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgments or to claim or to count anything as coming from us hallelujah but our power our ability our ability and sufficiency are for god so it's not because of you you you, you have not gained uh, uh, anything because of you, of your right state, of what you did, because you have a good heart, because you did things right, because you never cheated, because you never lied, right? It, everything that you have is not because of your good works, because we understand that the scripture tells us that even our best works, the best works that we can give are like filthy rags compared to his, right? So everything that we have, everything that we gain, the reason that we're in our right mind now, the reason that we're in our in, in, in the positions that we are now, right, is all because of God. So my sufficiency comes from God. Everything that I have come from the Father. That's what that scripture is saying. Now watch this in the sixth verse. Sixth verse. Now watch this. Who also have made us. Watch this now. Look what he made us, y'all. This is his word. He has made us able ministers. You are an able minister. Of what? Of the New Testament. So now watch this. You are an able minister, and look what you're supposed to be ministering. The New Testament. You're supposed to be letting people know of the New Testament, of the new thing, of the new covenant, of the new way now that has been ushered in by way of his son, Jesus Christ. And that's all of us. Every believer is, a, is an able minister. Hallelujah. It's just not it's just not left for those that are standing behind a pulpit. Amen. If you have a job and you have co-workers, you are an able minister. You have family members. You are an able minister. You go to the grocery store. You are an able minister. And look what we're supposed to be ministering now, saints. Watch this again. He said he hath made us. So you already made. It. Watch this. Made us able ministers of what? Of the New Testament. Now, that doesn't mean you can't show things back in the Old Covenant or under the Old Testament. But you have to go back and look at the Old Testament through the eyes or through the lens of Jesus Christ or your father. Or in other words, grace. Amen. Because we understand what grace is and we understand grace has everything that we need. But we also have to understand that grace is just not a thing or a message. All right. Grace is a person and grace. Our grace has a name and that name is Jesus Christ. So, see, that's why you have to go back. When I say you go back and look at it through the eyes of grace, you're going back and looking at it through the eyes of Jesus Christ. And you have to see it through the eyes of grace, not everything that is done back in the Old Covenant. But look what, he, what we made able ministers of, the New Testament. Watch this. Not of the letter. Watch this. But of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit. The spirit now giveth life. He's saying not of the letter, not of not of the ordinance, not of the law, not of the rules and the ordinance that they had to abide by. He said because that was killing them. They were not able to obtain and maintain, right? Watch this. Not only was it was it was it killing them, but they yearly they had to sacrifice. It was always something had to die, right? A goat had to die yearly. Goats had to die. P uh, uh, pigeons and, and, and birds, they had to die yearly. There was death always going on yearly, right? 
Watch this. Behind the letter, behind the ordinance and the laws that they had to keep. Watch this now. He said, but the spirit giveth life. Seven verse. But if the ministration of death written and engraving on stones. What is he talking about? The commandments. He said, if that was glorious so that the children of Israel could not steadfast behold the face of Moses for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away with. He said they could not uphold or understand the glory so it had to be covered but he said that glory was to be done away with i had another day or another set of glory that was coming where all could look upon all could see all would know of this glory that's coming he said but at that time they could not see it they could not um, um look upon it watch this now eight verse how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious he said if the ministration of the law was glorious then how how cannot the, the spirit, what, what was ushered in by way of Jesus Christ, be even the more glorious? Watch this, ninth verse. For if the ministration of condemnation, look what he called it, condemnation, be glory, much more do of the ministration of righteousness. Look, what the, look, look at the ministration that we're under now. The ministration of what? Of righteousness exceed. And going, he said that he said that that was under the ordinance and the law and the and the you do and the you do and the you do. He said that was condemnation. That was condemning folks because as soon as they messed up, he said he said, look, you had to do the right thing to get the right thing. Just like if you did the wrong thing, you received the wrong thing. So it was all on you do. It put the pressure on them to obtain. Put the pressure on them to see. And the only reason that he set it up like that so they could see that they could not they could not. They couldn't walk it out. They needed a savior. And he wanted them to see that, look, you need a savior. You can't, you yourself can't uphold and walk in my standards because I'm a perfect God. There is no flaws in me. I don't miss the mark. So for you to be able to walk in my standards, you're going to need somebody who's going to be able, that you can look to. You're going to need somebody that you can lean on. You're going to need somebody that you can trust that's going to walk it out for you. You need somebody to save you. And he always wanted to be their God. He always wanted to be the one that they come to. It was them that always was like, no. Nah, no, nah, Moses, you you go talk to him. We don't we, ain't, we don't want to deal. That's too much for us to deal with right there, right? So he's always wanted to have communion with us. He always wanted to have relationship with us. And thank God for Jesus now, because now we have access. <laughs> Hallelujah. We have access now to go in and talk to the Father one-on-one, -on -one, to sit with the Father one-on-one, -on -one, to commune with the Father one-on-one, -on -one, because that's how he always wanted it. From the very beginning, we see him and him and Adam walking in the eve of the garden, talking and, and communing with each other. He's always wanted to talk to us and commune with us. So that's why we thank God for Jesus. Well, now watch this. He said, if, if the ministry of condemnation was glory, much more do with the ministration of righteousness, of righteousness, of righteousness now, exceed in that glory. Are y'all with me on this? So see, under the law, it was a you do. It was a you do. Watch this. You had to do it. If you didn't do it, you would see the consequences of not doing the right thing. You would see the consequences of doing, of, of doing the wrong thing. See, there was always consequences, but the pressure was always on you. And now that we are under grace, grace takes that pressure off you. Take that pressure off of you having to do. Takes that pressure off of you having to work. It takes that pressure off of you now under grace. And now what you have to do is under grace now you have to start believing. But let, let, we're we jumping ahead. So let's look at some examples real quick of under the old covenant so we can so we can make our point plain of how it was done under the old covenant in the Old Testament. Turn with me real quick to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're just going to look at some real quick examples real quick, and then we're going, we're going to kick right back to the New Testament because he told us he made us able ministers of the New Testament. So every pastor, every minister, every evangelist, every prophet that has a platform should always, even if you go into the Old Covenant, we should always bring you back to the New Testament to show you how it is now. All right, so we're going to Deuteronomy, right? Deuteronomy. We're going to go to chapter 11. Let me show you this in Deuteronomy chapter 11 real quick. And we're going to start in the 26th verse. Just a couple of verses and we're going to go to another place. And what we're doing, we're just looking at some examples of how it was done in the Old Covenant. Old Testament, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 11. 26th verse. Let's see what it says. And it reads, Behold, Watch this, saints. Now, let me read this together. Let's read this together. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Well, hallelujah. Watch this now, 27 verse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you 
this day. So look how you receive the blessing under the old covenant. Look what it starts off. You obey and you have to do. And you, do you see that pressure that is put on us? Because you got to do it. You, you got to obey. Now watch this. You'll get the blessing, watch this now, if you obey the commandments of the Lord, our God, which I command you this day. Look at the next verse, 28th verse. Watch this. And the curse. Oh, Lord Jesus. We don't want no curse. Watch this. If you will not obey the commandment of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way, which I command you this day, to go after other gods which you have not known. Do y'all see this? Our first example. Do you see how obey is set? You see how Obey was sent out? You had to do it. And if you didn't do it, you open up the door for the curse to operate in your life. Y'all see this? Let's go another place. Let's look at another example. Job. Turn me real quick to Job. Job. Job, the 36th chapter. Real quick. I told you we're going to throw a lot of seeds today, Saints. So y'all follow me. 36th chapter. 36th chapter. We're going to go from the 11th verse. Watch this in Job, Job 36 and 11. Look what it says here. Just looking at some examples. Let's look at, let's look at the old covenant. Watch this. If they obey and serve him, okay, what happens if I obey? Look, look, who, look who it's on again, too. Look who the pressure's on again. You, you obey. If they obey and serve him, watch this. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Well, hallelujah. That sounds good to me, don't it, saints? Hallelujah. But, look at that next verse. Uh-oh. If they obey not, they shall perish. Hallelujah. By the sword, and they shall die without knowledge or die without understanding. Look at that. Look at that. See, you have to obey. Watch this. If you obey, guess what? You spend your days in prosperity. You, your, your years are going to be pleasurable. But it's all on you obeying. It's a, you have to obey, and if you don't obey, and if you miss the mark, then guess what happens? You're going to perish. Hallelujah. And you're going to end up dying without knowledge, understanding. You're going to perish. Are y'all with me on this? Look at, the, look at the examples. Deuteronomy says what? Put the pressure on you. We see here in Job, what? Who the pressure is on? It's on you. See the old covenant. And remember we read real early, he said, look, he said, look, that, that was the letter of the law. That was, that, was the, that was the letter of condemnation. He said, look, we're ushering in things by the spirit. Now, he said, the letter killer, but the spirit is going to offer life. So see how it was? See, what no, the spirit wasn't, wasn't here yet. The Messiah had not come yet. So look, all the pressure was on you because your Savior had not come yet. Let's look at one more example, then we're going to kick on. We're going to kick on into the new covenant. Turn me real quick to Isaiah. Let me show you another example. Let me show you another example. Isaiah 1. Look at this. We're real familiar with this scripture. We quote this a lot right now. Watch this. Isaiah 1, and we're going to start at the 19th verse. Isaiah 1, 19. Watch this now. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you be willing and obedient, uh-oh, what, what happens? You shall eat the good of the land, but you got to be willing. And you got to be obedient. You got to obey. You got to do it. And if you don't know, if you don't obey, if you don't, if you don't listen, if you don't abide by my commandments, all my rules, guess what? You ain't eating. You're going to eat something, but it ain't going to be the good of the land. Come on now. Look at that next verse, the, the, the 20th verse. But if you refuse and rebel or disobey, in, in other words, Watch this. You shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. And do y'all see these examples in the old covenant that we're looking at? It's all putting the pressure on you. You got to obey and you got to do right. And if you don't do right, you're going to be devoured. If you don't do right, you're going to perish. If you don't do right, you're going to get the curse. You're going to open up the curse to come over you. You better obey. You better get it right. And religion does that today, don't it? You better change. You better get it right now. You better stop that drinking. You better stop all that smoking. You better stop all that laying around and having fun. And you better, you better get it right now. You better change. Because if you don't change, you better obey. The Lord loves you, but you got to get it right. Don't, don't. Isn't that how religion does today? <clears throat> and, and look, ministering like that, instead of putting the pressure on you, when Jesus Christ has come and taken the pressure off of us now. Are, are y'all understanding this? The pressure should be off of you now. 
this, that. He said, look, he said, all those that are laid in hand, he said, come, come my way. He said, my yoke, my yoke not is easy. My burden is it, 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 light. Come on. He said, he said, when you understand what my son has done, he said, it's easy. It's easy. He, he, he's taking the pressure off of you. Why? Because my son has already done it for you now. But look how we can still, even ministers can still minister from the old covenant. And the scripture says those that continue to minister from the old covenant, he said, their heart is veiled. They don't, they, 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 they are veiled from the glory now that has been established by way of Jesus Christ. And it's a disservice as a, as a pastor, as a minister of his, of his glorious gospel now. To continue to, to put the pressure on you when, when the pressure has been taken off of you by way of Jesus Christ. And if I was a minister like that, I'm anti-Christ and preaching his word. But anti him because he's done it already, right? And that's what we're really supposed to be showing, that he's done it already. So in this line, in this understanding, in this topic about obedience, we see in the old covenant how it was you. That had to do. But now let me show you something. Let me, let me show you some good news. Now we finna, we, finna, we finna turn the tide. Now look at some good news. We're going to turn me to Romans. Romans chapter 10. Let me show you something. This is the springboard. We're going to springboard off of this. Now watch this now. Romans chapter 10. Let me show you something. Let me show you this. Romans chapter 10 and in the fourth verse. Two verses, two verses here. I'm going to show you two verses here. Now, here comes some good news now. All right, here come the bear. We finna, we, finna, we finna uncover some things now. We finna, we finna see it now. Romans chapter 10 and the fourth verse. Watch what it says here. Look at the first, fourth verse. Look what it says. For Christ is the end of the law. Watch this. For righteousness to everyone that what? Believe it. You see how this thing works now in the, in the new covenant? You see how it works now under the eyes and the guise of grace through the eyes of Jesus Christ? Look how it works now. It says that everything that we just read, every, every example I just used and showed you through, through Deuteronomy, through Job, through Isaiah, it's saying right now in Romans, this, this verse right here is alleviating all of that. It's saying Christ is the end of that now. Watch this. For what? For righteousness sake. For righteousness sake. Look, to everyone that what? That believe it. Now it's now it's, it's guiding you to something else now. Now you got to believe. But what do we got to believe? We're going to go a little deeper now. We're going to go a little deeper. So now that means we got to believe something now. We got to start believing some stuff now, right? It's not so much of me doing anymore because that back then you had to do and you get. Now he's saying what? Now you got to believe. You got to believe. Skip with me down to the 16th verse. Let me show you this. The same chapter, 16 verse. Let me show you this. Watch this. But hmm, they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Esaias said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Now, hold on. Y'all have to see this connection. Do y'all see the connection? He said, look, they have not obeyed the gospel. Well, why did they obey? Because he said, he said look, Esaias said, Lord, who hath believed? Do you see how he connected obeying to believing? And the reason they hadn't obeyed the report, because they have not believed. The report. And you see how he's connected the two together now? You see how he's put them together now? How your obeying now is in line with you believing now. Now it's no so much of you obeying and it's so much you doing. But it's now obeying by way of believing. Obeying by a way of believing. And now me obeying is simply me believing. We have to, it, now I obey by believing. Believing. Okay, what do you, what do I need to believe? Let's go a little deeper. I just want to see. I want you. I want you to see this connection. I want you to see how this puzzle is coming together. Now, turn with me to Romans. Say we're still in Romans. Turn with me to chapter one of Romans. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Chapter one of Romans, because he said Christ is the end of law for righteousness. And we skip down. He said, look. They have not obeyed. Why? Because they have not believed. Uh oh. So let's let's see what this let's see what this says right here. Romans one. Skip with me to the the fifth verse. Watch this. 
by whom we have received grace and apostleship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for grace and thank you, Lord, for apostleship. Watch this. For obedience to the faith among all nations for his namesake. So now, all of a sudden, you're hearing about obedience, but it's obedience to the faith. Okay, so now we're we getting, we getting, we getting a little deeper. Now, now, all of a sudden, we start to see something about obedience in the new covenant and understanding obedience. But now he's saying obedience to the faith. Now, you, you won't find nothing in the old covenant talking about obedience to the faith. Why? Because he had not come yet. Let me show you another place of it. Turn with me to Acts. Acts. Sixth verse. Watch this. Watch this. We're talking about obedience now. Obedience to the faith. What, what, obedience to the faith. What, what does that mean? Come on. We gonna, let's go a little deeper. Let's dive in a little deeper. Watch this now. Acts 6, verse 7, the word of God increased. Okay, so as the word of God increased, what happened? And the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. All right? And a great company of the priests, even the priests got involved. Look what the priests did. Were obedient. Uh-oh, good God, I'm hot. Look what they were obedient to. Obedient to the faith. Uh-oh, there it is again. Hold on now. Hold on. Here we have it again now. Disobedience to the faith. What, what? Help me to understand. What is disobedience to the faith now? He said, look, Christ has ended that. Christ is the end of the law. He said, now, he said, look, he said, they have not obeyed, but because they have not believed. And now here we are seeing what? We need to have, we need to be obedient to the faith. We need to be obedient to the faith. Let me show you another example. Show me with the Romans. Right, right back to Romans. Right back to Romans. 16th chapter. Romans 16. Let me show it to you again. Watch this. He's talking about being obedient to the faith. What, what is that? We're going to make it plain. We're going we're gonna to help you to see what it is. Watch this now. Romans 16, 25th verse. Hallelujah. Now to him that is the power, that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Look what you're supposed to be preaching. This is this is as a, as an as an able minister of the New Testament. Look what we're supposed to be preaching. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Everything points back to Jesus. Grace came by way of Jesus. Salvation came by way of Jesus. My healing, uh, uh, divine health came by way of Jesus. My turnaround came by way of Jesus. My deliverance came by way of Jesus. Are y'all with me? My righteousness came by way of Jesus. It, everything that I have now comes by way of Jesus. How did you get that job? His name is Jesus. How you end up in that house? His name is Jesus. How you get over there like that? His name is Jesus. Are, are y'all with me on this? Everything comes by way of Jesus. He has a name, saints. Don't be afraid to say his name. Things break, things come together, people want to know. How did that work for you? How did that break for you? His name is Jesus. Watch this, saints. Watch this. And preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Uh-oh, it's a mystery. Which was kept secret since the world began. So there was a mystery kept secret since the world began. Tell me more. But now, but now, now is made manifest. That mystery that was kept secret since the world began has now been made manifest. Watch this, saints. And by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, our Father, made known. He's made known something. What has he made known? To all nations. What has he made known to all nations? For the obedience, oh God, of faith. The obedience of faith now. So now, in the old, it was you had to obey. Now it's something you need to believe in the obedience of faith. Well, what is that? Let me show you what it is. Watch this. Watch this. Romans 5. Romans 5. You want to know what the obedience of faith is? Let me show it to you. Romans 5, verse 19. What is the obedience of faith? I'm about to show it to you. I'm about to show it to you. Hallelujah. Watch this. Verse 5, I mean, uh, chapter 5, verse, 19, verse 19. Watch what it says. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. We know who that was. 
We understand that. But look what it said. Behind his disobedience. What is he talking about? Adam in the garden. He said, look, all these trees, you can eat. You can eat up. Have your day. Have your way. Eat, eat as much as you want, where you want, how you want. He said, but that one tree right there, good and evil. He said, don't touch that tree right there. I don't, I don't want you to touch that tree. He said, leave that, you know, you know, you know by the, bypass that one. But everything else is yours. Hallelujah. That, that sounds like, sound like a good deal to me, don't it? Everything else, all these other fruit trees and everything else you want to partake in, you can have. Just bypass that one of the, of the knowledge of, uh, of good and evil. Watch this. But we understand what happened. We know how Satan came in and deceived Eve and behind Eve, she ushered in Adam. And we know what happened to the fall of man. So because of that, the scripture said that Adam was disobedient. Right? Because what? He didn't obey. Right? Watch this though. Watch this. This is awesome. So because of his disobedience, it ushered in sin and we all were born into sin. That's why you all have to be born again. Right? But watch this though. So, so the same way that we understand what Adam did, not only do we understand what Adam did, we believe that Adam messed up, right? We believe that Adam fell short. He, he ate of the fruit and ushered in a sin and all of his kin. We believe that, right? So the same way you believe that Adam messed up, he said, now you got to believe this next part too. Now watch this. So by the obedience uh -oh, of one, Shall many be made righteous? Obedience to the faith. He said, what? By the obedience. The same way that the one disobeyed. He said, the same way you believe that. He said, now believe this. One obeyed. And because he obeyed, watch this. Of one shall many, many be made what? Righteous. And right standing now with Jesus Christ. Why? Because he obeyed. Jesus Christ obeyed. Now watch this. Because he obeyed, guess what? It made you obey. Because everything that he did, you have access to or you are a partaker of. So Jesus Christ obeyed. Jesus Christ didn't miss the mark. Guess what? You have obeyed now. You have not missed the mark. You got to believe it. <laughs> He said, who? None have obeyed. He said, why? Because none have believed the report. But now, if you can believe that your obedience now is by way of Jesus Christ, the gift of your obedience now is because of what he did. So because he obeyed, I obeyed. Now watch this. All of those that we did in the, in the Old Covenant, those, those examples, Deuteronomy, Job, Isaiah, we all have access now to all of them and only the blessing now. Why? Because of our belief in his obedience. So it's no longer me having to do. Do. Now it's me believing in what he did. And if I believe in what he did, I receive what he obtained. And he obtained everything without missing the mark. So now watch this. Because of that, I'm blessed. Oh, God. Oh, God. I got to see this. Because I believe in what he did. Remember Deuteronomy say, if you obey, you're blessed. You're blessed. I put blessing and cursing before you. If you obey to do all of the commandments, guess what? You're blessed. Guess what? Guess what, saints? We're blessed. What did Job say? Job said what? Say, 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 if you if you obey, you're gonna eat the, you say you're gonna, you're gonna your, your years will be pleasurable. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Guess what, saints? You have set yourself up because of your belief in Jesus Christ for your years to be pleasurable. What did Isaiah say? He said, if you are willing and obedient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, well, you'll eat of the good of the land. Guess what, saints? Guess what you set yourself up with by believing in Jesus Christ? To do what? To eat of the good of the land. And it's all off of his obedience. It's no longer in my works. It's no longer in me doing. All of that has been done away with now by way of Jesus Christ. The law is finished. Now I am under grace and I'm, I'm riding in everything that he did. And so because he obeyed, guess what, saints? I obey and I have access now to everything that comes to somebody that is obedient. Oh, God, I got to see this. Now the pressure of me obeying now has been taken off of me. Why? Because he did it. See, when you start to understand what all Jesus Christ has really done for you, oh, my God, this thing gets, it gets so much easier. You talk about the peace that starts to rest with you. You see, when you understand obedience, under the eyes of Jesus Christ. And how because he obeyed. Come on, we just read it. Let me say, come on, let me read it one more time. 
Let's read it one time. Romans, Romans 5 and 19. We just read it. For one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience, the obedience, the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. It's because of his obedience now I'm righteous. It's because of his obedience now I'm blessed. It's because of his obedience now. I can eat of the good of the land. It's because of his obedience now. My years will be pleasurable. It's because of his obedience and my belief and what he did. Hallelujah. It's not me working anymore. It's not me working anymore. It's all in me believing in what he did. Watch this, saints. And if you ain't, if you haven't quite grasped that yet, or you have not understand it, or even seen it in that light, that's fine. That's good. Amen. Now you got something to go back and look. You got scriptures now to go back and, and meditate on yourself and say, Lord, I see it, but I don't quite understand it. Reveal it to me. Now you got scriptures to go back. Help me to understand it even more. Reveal it to me so I can walk in that revelation. If he obeyed, Lord, help me to see it more. Help me to get it down into my heart even the more that he obeyed. Help me to take that pressure off of me, Lord, that he obeyed. Show it to me even more. It is him that did it. Takes the pressure off of you. No more pressure on you, saints. No more you obeying. You believe in the obedience of Jesus Christ. You understand that he obeyed. So because he obeyed, you're blessed. Because he obeyed, you're going to eat of the good of the land. Because he obeyed, it's going to turn around for you. Because he obeyed, you have the blessing of Abraham. Because he obeyed, you're blessed going in, you're blessed coming out. Because he obeyed, he made me the head and not the tail. Because he obeyed, he has blessed my storehouse. Because he obeyed, he, he said, I command the blessing. I command it. I command it. I command it towards you. And it ain't because of your works. It's not because of what you did. It's all because of my son. So look at my son. And everything that you see he obtained, everything that you see that he achieved, everything that you see that he had the victory in, see him and see yourself. Because now you are in him. And because you are in him, you have everything that he has. And he obeyed. Guess what? You obeyed. Watch this. Hallelujah. That's awesome. L let me show you another place. Let me, let me show you something else. Watch this. So, so we have our obedience. Well, what else? What else did he do for us? Let, turn with me real quick here. Turn with me real quick to, to um, Romans, the eighth chapter. You know what? Scratch that one. Go to Corinthians real quick. We're going to come back there. I'm going to show you that last. We're going to end it there. Hallelujah. Because that's, that's the icing on the cake. Turn with me to um, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. Let me show you something. Watch this. Watch this now. We're talking about Jesus now. Because he obeyed, he has given us the gift of obedience. What else has he done for us? Hallelujah. Let's go see. 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, 30th verse. Let's see what else he's done for us. He's, he's obeyed for us. So that means I'm obedient. I'm already obedient. So you're obedient. You wake up every day obeying. Hallelujah. So does that mean I don't have to listen to God? No, you still listen to God. If God directs you in a, in a place, you still go. I'm not saying you just, but I'm saying as far as understanding obedience, your obedience by way obeying the faith, obeying the faith. You're obeying the faith. You're obeying the fact that God loves you. How do you, how do I know he loves me? Because he sent his son. So I'm, obe I'm obedient to the faith. I'm believing in the faith of what, G what the father has done by way of Jesus Christ. So my obedience is coming by way of Jesus Christ. So because he obeyed, because he obeyed, I obey now. And I have access to all of that, all of that that we read in the law. Because it said, if you obey, but you know what he did? He sent Jesus and Jesus took the place of where you were supposed to be. And now because he did it, you get all of the blessing. You get all of the years of pleasure. You get all of the eating of the good of the land. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. Y'all, are y'all following me on this? So my belief in him has me obeying the faith. Obedience of the faith. Obedience to the faith. So what else did he do? Let's see. First Corinthians. First chapter. 30th verse. Watch this. But of him. But of him are you. Oh God. Look at this. Are you. What are we? In Christ Jesus. What you say? I'm in him already. I, ain't, I, I don't have to work. I don't have to do nothing. You sure I don't have to do nothing to get in? Uh -uh. Just believe. You're in. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Who of God has made unto us. Now look what he made unto us. What he has made unto us. Wisdom. Righteousness. Sanctification. And redemption. Hold on. So hold on pastor. You just told me. That I'm obedient. Because he was obedient. Now you're telling me pastor. 
that I'm also wise because he was wise? You mean to tell me I'm righteous because of him? I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified already. I'm set apart already because of him. Oh, God, I got to see this. I'm redeemed. He has redeemed my life from destruction. He has redeemed my life from poverty. He has redeemed my life from sickness and disease because of him, because of what he did. Look what he is for us, saints. He is not only giving you the gift of obedience. He has given you the gift of wisdom. He has given you the gift of sanctification. He has given you the gift of redeem, redemption from all that hell has set up for you. For all that was before you because of what you really deserve was to go to hell. But he took that off of you, put it on himself, and gave you what he had. And now we are redeemed of the Lord. So now all you have to do is start saying so. And the only way you start saying so, if you get it in your heart. I'm just saying so because of, of your head knowledge. Oh, if you get it in your heart and you really know that you are redeemed. So when sickness do try to come see you, oh, I am redeemed. When situations do try to come see you, oh, I am redeemed. You are trespassing on holy ground. You got to get up off of here. You got to leave here. I ain't saying stuff won't come. I ain't saying stuff won't try you. But when it come trying you, you better know who you are in him. And you better know the price that he paid for you. And when it comes to see you, you better be able to open up your mouth and let you know, oh, ho, oh, ho, oh, hold up. You trespassing. You trespassing on holy ground. This has been paid for by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Sickness, you got to leave here. Disease, you will not reign here. In my, and not in my life, not in my bloodline, no more. All that stops here. Why? Because of what Jesus Christ has done for me. And I believe it without a shadow of a doubt. What? I ain't never seen that kind of stuff work. And people still going down. I, hey, I ain't got nothing about nobody else. I know where I stand. Hallelujah. I ain't comparing myself to them. Well, they were mighty men of God and mighty women of God, and they still went down behind sickness. Hey, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm standing on what his word says. And even though I may not have seen everything his word has said, I'm still believing it. I'm still trusting in it. I still believe that he did it all for me. And I'm going to go down believing. Hallelujah. It's by faith, y'all. It's by faith. Come on, saints. It's by faith that we believe that he's done it. Obedience to the faith. Now my obeying is believing what Jesus Christ has done. And look what it says again. He has made us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. One more place and we're done for today. Romans 8. Romans 8. And we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done after this. Romans 8. Romans 8. Watch this. Verse 32. One verse. One verse. This is the icing on the cake, saints. Watch this. Watch this. It's the ice. Romans 8, 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. What you say? He said he didn't spare him, but he delivered him up for us all. Who is us all? All that will believe. All that will trust. Watch this. How shall he not with him? <laughs> Hallelujah. How shall he not with him also freely do what? Give us all things. Good God Almighty. Good gracious. How much more plainer does the word of God have to be for us saints to get us to believe? Come on, saints. He's made this thing so simple. He's made it so easy for us to grasp. It don't, it don't take a lot of intellect and logic to understand what his word has declared. He said, look, he didn't spare him. He, he delivered him up for us all. He said, if I delivered up my only begotten son for the whole world, he said, look, he said, how then? How will I not with him? Because I did that. Because everything came by through him. So how not with him or through him? Watch this. Also freely give us, who is us? Those that believe. All things, all things are possible for them that believe. He said, how won't I do it for you? What make you think I won't do it for you? What make you think I can't, I won't, I haven't and done healed you already? What make you think the turnaround has not already been set before you already? What make you think you don't have the power to get out of that weakness or to, or to get away from that vice that you have in your life? You already have the power. I've already done it for you. If I've sent my son and manifested my love by way of my son, what make you think that I did not complete the work in totality? Come on, saints. This thing is already done. It's complete. It's finished. Finito. It's a done deal in the eyes 
the Father. We need to get to understanding this even the more. We need to get this rooted and grounded that no matter what comes our way, no matter what I face with, I am already victorious. Why? Because Jesus Christ has already overcome the world. And that same Jesus Christ, that same power that resided in him is in me now. The greater one is in me now. And there is no good thing will he withhold. No good thing. He won't withhold not one good thing to them. That are upright. Guess what? Guess where my uprightness come from? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm upright because of Jesus Christ. And he said, won't, he said, I won't withhold no good thing for them that are upright. And Jesus Christ has made us upright. There's nothing he won't withhold for you. All you got to do is believe it. I don't care what stage you in. All you got to do is believe it. I don't care what the doctors say and what the reports say. All I need you to do is just believe that you're already healed. Through the pain, believe that you're already healed. Through the frustration, believe it. Believe it, saints. Believe it. Believe it. That's all you got to do is believe. You keep believing. You stand in your belief. You keep focusing on him. Looking at him, the author and the finisher. The author and the finisher. He's the beginning and the ending of your faith. It is through him and him alone, Jesus Christ. Good God Almighty. What won't he give you? What won't he allow you to have? I've already given you my son. Well, what, what is healing? I've given you my son. What is a turnaround? I've already sent my son. I, what is deliverance? I've already sent my son. What is that? Good God Almighty. Come on, saints. We got it. We got it. Good God Almighty. I, <laughs> I feel vigilant behind that thing right there now. Come on. We got to, we got to get this, saints. It's already done. My obedience is already done. My uprightness is already done because of Jesus Christ. Christ. Obedience to the faith. Obedience to the faith. Simply in you believing that Jesus Christ has already done it. So my belief in Jesus Christ makes me obedient to the faith. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all go back and y'all look at those scriptures again. Don't take my word for it. Take his word for it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You go back and you study that. And you meditate on that yourself. Let him reveal some things to you in his scripture. And we thank God for his word. We honor him. We thank him for the opportunity to eat and be fed of this from this heavenly manner in Jesus' name. Amen. Real quick, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you the glory. We magnify you. We thank you for obedience. 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 Because, we, because of Jesus Christ, we have obeyed. We are believing in the obedience of Jesus Christ that makes us blessed. We are believing in the obedience of Jesus Christ that makes us the ability to eat of the good of the land you have made us. We have believed in the obedience of Jesus Christ. Our years will be pleasurable. We have believed in the obedience of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God. We believe it. We thank you for it. We honor you for it. You've made our way easy. You've made our way easy. You've made our way easy, simply believing. And against all odds, Father, we will believe. Against all obstacles, issues, problems, trials, and tribulations, we will believe in spite of it all. We're going to keep our eyes on him and going to believe what he has done for us. We thank you for it. We honor you for it. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Hiya, Basata. Good God Almighty. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, saints. Amen, saints. Amen, saints. Believe. 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 Believe it. Believe it. The more you believe it, the more it starts to come together. The more you believe it, the more it starts to come together for you. The more you believe it, the more you start to see stuff that you hadn't seen. You done read about it, but you ain't quite seen it in your life. Look, keep believing. Keep believing. Keep striving. Keep going. Keep going. Keep seeking. Keep seeking. Don't let life take you off of your belief. Don't let people take you away from your belief. You keep believing. You keep believing until you see the expected end of what you're believing for. Until you see the expected end of your faith. He said, look, he said, I have an expected end for you. I just need you to keep believing me for it. Keep believing me for it. Time go by. Don't let time get your attention. Keep believing me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep your, I'm in eternity. I'm in eternity. Don't, 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 don't let time get your attention. Just because time done went by, you've been at it for four years. You've been at it for 10 years. You've been at it for 15 years. You still ain't seen the break. You still ain't seen the change. Keep believing. Keep believing. Keep believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give y'all these scriptures. Hallelujah. 
Hey, man, I'm going to give y'all these scriptures. We're going to do Bible study Wednesday at 7 o'clock. These are the scriptures we're going to be going over. I'm going to give them to you real quick, and I'm going to let you get out of here. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 8. Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Our next scripture is going to be Psalms 18 and 2. Psalms 18 and 2. Our next one is going to be Proverbs 4 and 22. Proverbs 4 and 22. Our next one is going to be John 13 and 23. John 13 and 23. <coughs> Excuse me. After that, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Colossians 1 and 13. Colossians 1, verse 13. And last but not least, Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. One more time real quick. De Deuteronomy 28 and 8. Psalms 18 and 2. Proverbs 4 and 22. John 13 and 23. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Colossians 1 and 13, Hebrews 11 and 6. And what you do, you take one of those verses and you meditate on that verse all day and all night long. One verse. Hallelujah. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. Amen. And I thank God for my Salt and Light family. I thank God for the Facebook family. I thank God for all of the, the hearers and the doers of his word. Amen. Let his word edify you and strengthen you even the more. And that go in even the deeper with him by way of his word in Jesus' name. All right, saints, as we depart, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. Amen. You all be blessed until next time.